away with it and think that you don't see what they've done to your body. They rob, kill, and destroy. They take without fear all that which we hold so dear. They won't see it coming, and they won't know The moment you bring them down so low They'll even deny that it's your mighty end When out of the beds they won't stand They won't stand Jezebel's judgment day, it has arrived Deny repentance, they all die Jesus gave us so much space that she wouldn't turn The fullness of the judgment so well learned They won't see it coming they won't know The moment you bring them down so low They'll even deny That it's your mighty end When out of their beds they won't stand They won't stand they won't stand, stand, they won't stand. Thank you so much for joining us for another live stream podcast. Just wanted to use this time to tell you about our other channels and websites. You'll find links below for our music backup channel, for our brand new Jesus Not Paul channel, as well as for our blog and our website, as well as the website for JesusNotPaul.org. Hope you'll check it out. There's free materials you can find on those websites, especially JesusNotPaul.org. Everything we provide is free of charge, but we also have a PayPal link below for donations for those who feel led. And we really appreciate your support to help us continue to making content that's helping people find the truth and to find Jesus Christ as their Messiah. Thanks so much for your support and enjoy the podcast. clicking down starting our show welcome everybody to another broadcast for without spot or blemish ministry so glad everybody's here today today's a very important day because we have been working very hard here at continuing to look through the veil of the masonic sigils being thrown at us left and right by 
your your people like Jonathan Kahn and Kirk Cameron and they they are not alone. Everybody that's deceiving us in the church is showing us who they are. And y'all will forgive if you hear Samson, he's kind of whimpering, his hips are hurting him. And at any rate, getting back to the topic, these people are showing us who they are. And I've shown you that many times before, but we're going to go on a deep dive today because I made that video yesterday that I posted just the length of that song that you saw at the intro here um, with regard to these two. Um, and, you know, the reference in the thumbnail is the movie They Live in which the, this character played by Rowdy Roddy Piper gets these glasses and he's actually able to see with the glasses what's really going on and, and who is running the show in that movie. And uh, it, I thought it was a nice allegory for what's going on in the church. And, you know, one significant point about all this is there, as I've said before, there are many ministries that will actually show you what the Illuminati is doing. This guy, a call for their uprising. Um, he's got another channel called a time for judgment. Um, this person hasn't put up videos in a couple years, but he did a really great job. Jeremiah Cohen and uh, Days of Noah, he does more technology, but he also looks through the veil at all the Masonic stuff that's going on um, in the church. And the one thing I've noticed is that of all the people that notice these things, you, know, you could see in the call for the uprising symbol, he has, he's got a basically a pyramid with an all seeing eye in it. We're gonna talk about that a little today too, but he clearly sees what's going on from a reference point in terms of the Masonic sigils that are flashed at us all the time. And in case you're wondering what the word sigil means, we're going to define that here in a second. But when I'm the point I'm trying to make is like all of these ministries see through this stuff. And yet I don't hear them talking about it in the church. And for me as Christians, it truly is more important that we identify it from the wolves and sheep's clothing. We know that the world is corrupt. It's pretty easy for most of us to identify um, where the world is corrupt and the Mason, Masonic symbolism there. But what about amongst the people that call themselves Christians? You know, so many people go into churches these days when they get born again and they think they're in a safe place, but they're really not. It's actually more dangerous in the church because it's more veiled. And that's why um, in the scriptures, in the book of Revelation, it says to come out of her, my people, and be not partaker of her sins. And it's talking about the Babylonian whore of a church that we have today. So um, I am encouraging anybody that sees any of the things that you see in today's broadcast to mark that place and avoid it. If you're a member of it, I would say come out and trust God and him alone, trust his word, dig into the scriptures, read the word of God and dig in really deep. But before we go into get me give you the definitions, we need to, as always, pray. So, Father God, we just come before you in the mighty name of Jesus, and we bind up every demonic spirit that would come against this broadcast, either here with me in the well or that would mess with even Samson. And uh, we bind up all demonic spirits, command them to leave us right now, and we loose that um, the Holy Spirit would be present and would be able to speak forth whatever it's given to the Holy Spirit by the Father through the Son. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We bind up any hindering spirits here or any convolution of the word in my mouth. We bind that up and in, in, the, in the name of Jesus, and we bind up the convolution of the word in the ears of the listener, and we loose in the name of Jesus that only the truth would be spoken and the truth received. Father God, I ask that no flesh would speak, but that you would speak forth and give a word to, to me and your people, Father, that about what's going on and how... Even in these last days, it says that people would present themselves as being on your team, but they would be wolves in sheep's clothing, and that if it were possible, even the elect would be deceived. And I just praise and thank you that it's not possible as long as we're walking with you in obedience to your commandments. And I give you all the praise and glory for helping us to see through uh, the dark things that these people that call themselves your ministers when they're not, they're the synagogue of Satan. Thank you for revealing to us all what they're doing so that we can know not to participate in their version of, it's churchianity, it's, it's Satanism really. And I thank you for helping all of your people to come out of that in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So I wanted to start off with what a definition of the word sigil is, because I'm going to use that a lot in reference to these hand signs that you will see uh, used um, in the secular world and the world. Well, none of this is secular. If you call it secular, it's not. It's all religious. It's just which team are you on? Do you serve 
the malevolent spiritual being called Satan or Lucifer through masonry, that's a religion, or do you serve God the Father through his son Jesus Christ? But we as followers of Jesus are not supposed to be throwing around hand, secret hand signs and sigils. And I'm going to reveal that to you today, both outside and inside the church, as well as a lot of other um, sigil magic being used through all sorts of symbols. And uh, we're going to go through that extensively as it applies both to Jonathan Kahn and Kirk Cameron, who we're going to start with Kirk um, in a second here, but I want to define our terms. So here we have sigil is a pictorial symbol used in a ritualistic magic, used in rituals, ritualistic magic and supposed to have supernatural power. And that's the thing. When they use these sigils, they do believe that it, it gives them power over the people that they're using the sigils on. The cult, the, they consider them their cult members. And that's why you'll see Jay Z and all, and Beyonce throw all these symbols and sigils at their concerts. I'll show you images of that forthwith. And this happens in the church all of the time by the Masons who are in the church. I want to greet the people that are here. I see Justice, Lori, Hop to it, Phil. And I and, uh, just appreciate you guys being here today. I've got the chat room open for this subject in case you want to chat. Um, also hit like and subscribe if you'd like to. And again, if you like what we're doing, you can make a donation to the PayPal link below. We've also got free uh, materials, links below, as I mentioned in the intro. Okay, so I want to define for you exoteric versus esoteric really quickly because this is how they trick us. They apply two disparate or separate meanings to their sigils and their symbols. So exoteric means suitable for or communicated to the general public not belonging limited or pertaining to the inner or select circle as of disciples or intimates so in the world of masonry the higher you go as far as your your level whether you're like a first degree or a 33rd degree mason you're going to get different secrets along the way for which you are going to be a held accountable and B, you're going to keep them secret. But some of the things that you're doing in public, you're going to let the public believe one thing about it, while it really has an, an esoteric meaning, which means the hidden meaning, the occult meaning. So esoteric means understood by or meant for only the select few who have special knowledge or interest belonging to the select few. So again, the people that are the members of the Masonic um, lodges and whatnot the ones at the lower levels at the first second third and fourth degree they really don't know a whole lot about what they're doing they think it's a fraternity they're doing nice things for the community they're raising money for children's hospitals it seems all benevolent but they don't understand as you go higher and higher that you're actually serving lucifer they haven't been exposed to the writings of manly p hall yet and um, some of the other leaders of the past that made it very clear that masonry is in service to lucifer the light bearer and so um, they're, they're not there yet, and they're just going to lodge meetings, and everything seems very cordial. And in fact, uh, biblical studies will be encouraged at those levels, and a belief in some faith will be encouraged. It will seem very, as I said before, benevolent. And that's the problem that these higher level, higher order ones that are in the more secret realms of these secret societies, their job is to infiltrate other organizations that have benevolent, righteous um, purposes, such as serving God the Father through His Son, Jesus Christ, and to twist those up. And I want to show you through um, a sigil or a graven image representation of something that has both an exoteric, again, that's for the masses, and an esoteric, meaning that which is hidden to the select few. So I did a podcast called What Does Your Cross Idol Represent? And I called it an idol because it's a graven image. And if you go in the scriptures, the graven image is here uh, represented in the second commandment in Exodus 20, verse 4. Thou shalt not make any graven image or any likeness of anything in heaven above or the earth beneath or the water under the earth. It's reemphasized throughout um, the First Testament over and over again. Leviticus 26, 1 through 5. You shall make no idols nor graven image. Um, again, in... Uh, Deuteronomy, it says, um, lest, uh, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. So there is a moratorium, a complete forbiddenness. It's an abomination to God for us to have any graven image. And of course, there are crosses in most every church. 
and you are told the exoteric meaning, the meaning that you're supposed to have is this is, this is a representation of Jesus Christ and what he did for us and his, the sacrifice for us. And you're supposed to see, as, see it as a means by which um, you show your allegiance to God the Father and his son Jesus Christ because of what he did. But what you might not realize in your, or your childhood as a believer is that these, pig, these um, graven images are absolutely forbidden by God. And he said through Jesus that we would, know, we would worship God in spirit and in truth. And we didn't see a similitude for God. We don't know what Jesus looks like. We're not supposed to pull God down to the level of a graven image. And I'm going on about graven images because of the graven image that Kirk Cameron's going to use, and you're going to see in a second, that he promoted all throughout 2020, and he wrote a book about it. Uh, it's really ridiculous what he was able to convince the church to fall for. And he is the chief charlatan, the chief used car salesman. And I'll show you other videos of him where he shows his stuff, and he he just thinks he's so cute and adorable, and everybody loves him, and he's just so believable. But uh, he doesn't use scripture hardly ever, and he he's really a horrible person with a veneer of being a really great guy, and uh, it's quite irritating um, because he is uh, could be very persuasive to people that look on the outside of Kirk Cameron, and they don't see through that there are demons that lurk beneath. So getting back to exoteric versus esoteric. The exoteric meaning again of the cross is that it represents Jesus, what he did for us. And here we have him on an app and actually on an Egyptian onk, which was the first cross shape that was used in idolatry. I've done many broadcasts on that, and I'm not going to take a huge deep dive because I want to get to what we're talking about. But uh, that is Kirk and, and um, Jonathan Kahn. But as far as this goes, the esoteric meaning of this is that Jesus has been crucified and sacrificed to the feminine divine. The Ankh represents the female genitalia, the, the circular aspect of the, the teardrop, the upside down teardrop shape that represents uh, the uterus, the womb of life. The crossbar represents the sun. Everything goes to sun worship. So it's sun, sunset to sunrise. It also represents the fallopian tubes. And then, of course, the stem beneath the crossbar represents the vaginal canal where the penis goes, and they call that the portal of life. So that is the esoteric meaning that the male archetype of God has been sacrificed to the feminine divine. And you'll see that represented in many movies these days. And this kind of um, blasphemy against God and against the male archetype, and it's why first, second, third wave feminism came about was to upset the apple cart. And really at its core, Satan wants to be God and he wants to be something that he's not equipped to be. He is not meant to be God because he's neither omnipotent, omniscient or omnipresent. So he doesn't have any characteristics of God, but he thinks he can be God. And that's that kind of pride. And it's the same with the hierarchy in this natural world with the male and the female. And what Satan wants to do is he wants to take God's position. So he wants to sacrifice a God, Jesus, the son of God to the feminine. And also men of today are being sacrificed like in the family courts and everywhere that you see and, and made to seem like bubbling idiots and er everywhere you go. And we're all being disenfranchised for that very same reason to upset God's hierarchy and what he originally intended. So I told you all that just to explain the difference between exoteric and esoteric. And they, they, there is an exoteric meaning to that cross that we receive that's really a false one. And because we're breaking God's law and having graven images and symbols to represent him, which he forbids, we are actually carrying around and wearing things on our body that are, in this case, a memento mori, a memory that you have to die in Latin. And these things... There's two, there's two different meanings, but we're believing a false meaning. And what's at the root of the real meaning of the cross is the sacrifice that Satan says, well, I, I pinned Jesus to a, um, to a vagina. And it's really, that's how blasphemous it is. Blasphemous it is. He says, I'm so much better than you that I will slam you up on the male, the female body part, which I would use the P word because that's what he would do, but I won't because it's a family show. Okay. So 
Now that you know the difference between exoteric and esoteric, I want to talk about Masonic hand sigils. And they've got tons of them. They've got tons of hand signs that they show. You know, a lot of times if you look back at the old images of, of um, Billy Graham, he was often pointing that one finger up in the air or two fingers up in the air. You'll see many people do that now. A lot of this is Masonic sigil, sigils and representations. They have secret handshakes, secret symbols, and they have secret hand signs that they show that um, they could say, for example, in the case of the Baphomet horned hand sign, you know, in Texas, everybody that goes to UT says hook them horns and they hold up that hand sign. So that could be an exoteric meaning for the masses, but really it is very much representative of the Baphomet, the horns of the Baphomet. And we're going to talk more about that in a second, because of course that is a symbol that Mr. Um, Cameron, he flashes in a video he did with Ben Shapiro. I'm going to show you here momentarily. So you can see here that the Beatles actually also on um, their yellow submarine, they flashed the 666 hand sign on the left and also the the horned god, the Baphomet hand sign on the right. So Paul McCartney's on your left and on your right um, is, um, why does his name escape me of all people? He's the one that got shot. Anyway, everybody that's watching knows exactly who that is, and he's holding up the Baphomet hand sign. They've also got it um, in the cartoon. That's John Lennon, excuse me, John Lennon holding up the Baphomet hand sign. So nothing, nothing unusual there. You could see here also Beyonce in the bottom right has the 666 hand sign with both hands. Uh, Jay-Z's holding up that triangle, the upward pointing triangle, which represents the, the pyramid, the male member. And, um, of course you can see that on the back of the dollar bill. He's got the, he's got his eye coming through it, the all seeing eye. And of course, um, Beyonce is representing that, um, in between her hands, the all seeing eye with the end of her microphone. So all of this sigil magic is being done on everybody. Nearly every day of your life, you've been exposed to it over and over again. And so now we come to the point where I will show you the video where, um, Ben Shapiro is interviewing Kirk and Kirk brings him a graven image of all things of this monument that's at uh, Plymouth in Plymouth, Massachusetts. It's supposed to represent the, the Puritans, but I will tell you in advance, the Puritans were against idolatry. They wouldn't even celebrate Christmas so much that it was outlawed in Massachusetts until the 1800s. And they did not build this monument uh, to themselves. It was actually built by the Masons. And I'll show you the receipt on that as well. It's in the, it's in the Wikipedia article about the monument. So it's public knowledge that he's walking around presenting to people in the 2020, um, a monument that was dedicated uh, by the Masons, really to Satan. And you'll see all the satanic and Masonic representations on the monument. So let's go ahead and get that video started. So I, I don't mean to sound selfish, but you brought me a gift. I, I've, I've heard that there is a gift. Yes, I did. I'm, I'm, me. I'm very eager to give it to you. Okay, excellent. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is amazing and also large. That the irony of him giving it to someone of Hebrew descent who has the Torah and the Pentateuch that's completely against idolatry, the irony of him not balking at it and all of that just shows who we're dealing with with Ben Shapiro as well. And it's incredible and large. And what <laughs> what is this? It's a graven image. But the Bible says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Okay, so so I'm gonna tell, I'll tell you what this is. So I made a documentary several years ago uh, called Monumental in which I retraced the escape route of the pilgrims. And What's interesting about the pilgrims is their contrary view to Christmas that Kirk does not share. The reason I made Christmas celebrations in New England were illegal during parts of the 17th century and were culturally taboo or rare in former Puritan colonies from foundation until the mid 18th century. The Puritan community found no scriptural justification for celebrating Christmas and associated such celebrations with paganism and idolatry. Indeed, Christmas celebrations in 17th century England involved carnival-like behavior including role inversion, heavy drinking, and sexual liberties. But to the contrary, Kirk has promoted celebrating Christmas and he's even made a movie about it. And he is thus in contradiction with the Puritans and the early settlers from the Mayflower who landed at Plymouth Rock and what they actually believed. Our pilgrim forefathers and foremothers left us what I call the, the, the secret sauce recipe 
for how to build a free and just society under the Word of God. Just as with Jonathan Kahn, Kirk calls for a return to the belief systems of the original settlers, but what he really calls for is to the belief systems of the Masons, like George Washington, who founded this country. Idolatry and Masonry is what he's promoting. And they left it for us in the form of this monument. The Puritans didn't leave behind this monument, the Masons did. The cornerstone was laid August 2nd, 1859 by the Grand Lodge of Masons in Massachusetts under the direction of the Grand Master John T. Hurd. The monument was completed in October 1888, was dedicated with appropriate ceremonies August 1st, 1889. This is not something left behind by the Puritans, but by the Masons. And that tells you exactly who Kirk Cameron is coming in the name of, not the Puritans, the Masons. Which he just lied right through his teeth. And that's the slimy, slimy used car salesman put on a sweet boy act that he does. And this is like one of the most evil things. And the Ben Shapiro show, I mean, I'm not sure how many views this has had at this point. He gets millions of views for this sh Sunday show, Day of the Sun show that he does. The real one is 81 feet tall. It's 180 tons of solid granite. It's the largest granite monument in America, and it's invisible. Nobody knows it's there. It's hidden behind a forest of trees in Plymouth, Massachusetts today. And it spells out all the principles that you and I love. And this is a replica of it so that people can see it. Um, you've probably never heard of it. It's called the National Monument to the Forefathers. And I, I, I hired the Weta Workshop, who does all the sculpting oh, wow. for yeah, the yeah. rings, to capture all of the detail. And uh, if I can, I'd yeah, love yeah, to please. just explain it to you. Please, I, I would love that. Okay. All right, this is awesome. I can't, I, I can't wait to explain this to you. So history tells us that our forefathers you see that? This is awesome. The bated breath. I can't wait to explain to you. This is so amazing. You're not going to believe it. It's like blah, 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 blah. That's how he sells stuff. You'll see him doing this constantly, trying, trying to rev up some kind of emotional response in you to get you fired up for something that is against God's word. You're not supposed to make any graven image of anything. It's not even supposed to lay a, a, a tool to a stone like this. And that's what masonry is all about. Foremothers believe this, that to have a, a functioning society that was free, you had to start with, what's it say right here? Faith. And faith is uh, the largest of all of these figures. And Did you see that? Not only is he promoting idolatry, but he's making the Baphomet hand sign. He's telling you who he is. Would you like me to show them how the sign of the curse works? The sign Completely of the curse? different. How does it go? <laughs> this is the sign of the horns. A curse sign. The two fingers extended. This way, spread apart for sort of shotgun blast. Well, there are other ones, too. Yeah, what are the other ones? The other ones, one of them's the pox sign. That's three fingers extended. A pox on you? A pox on you. During the Middle Ages, this was... Yeah. The largest of all of these figures. They believe those curses work. They don't hold up these sigils for no reason, guys. They really believe it has a mesmerizing effect on you that they will get or elicit a response from you because they do it. This isn't, they're not doing all this stuff just for fun. And as I've shown in many other podcasts, there's so many layers to this. Like some of the churches you go into where you see mesmerizing lights with flicker rates and black lights and strobes, and they've got all kinds of symmetrical, um, uh, images on the screen that are constantly moving like a kaleidoscope, all that is scientifically proven to put you in a state of mesmerization or hypno or being hypnotized. And at that point, you are more easily persuaded to do what they want. All of this stuff is witchcraft. He's conducting witchcraft. And I'm going to show you in a second how he conducted on a 15,000 people at a Liber Liberty University um, speech he gave, which was more used car salesmanship to get people to sin against God. And she's pointing to heaven and she's got a book in her hand. It happens to be the Bible. That was the Geneva Bible brought over by the pilgrims on the Mayflower. Her feet are on a rock and that's pil- A Bible being in the hand of a statue uh, or a graven image is like someone that gets a tattoo and puts John 316 on it or scripture or something. And, and acts like it wasn't a sin to get the tattoo when the Bible says, don't mark your body. You see what I'm saying? It's like God's word says through Samuel, obedience is better than sacrifice. 
So obey God's word and don't make some idol or mark your skin with a tattoo against God's word. How does, how can you please God by doing something that you say you dedicate to him, but it can't be dedicated to him because it's going against his word. You're breaking his law. None of this makes any sense. Uh, uh, Plymouth Rock. And uh, she has a star on her forehead representing wisdom. Baphomet has a star on his forehead. Uh, that star on her forehead is a pentagram, just like the one you see here on the Baphomet. Look familiar? Uh, and so they would reason from the scriptures uh, to create their society. Now check this out. Faith is then expressed in these four key ways. N number one, it's first expressed through morality. And morality is uh, depicted as, as a woman here holding the Ten Commandments in her left hand and uh, the scroll of Revelation in her right hand. So I'm asking you as you look at the irony of her having the Ten Commandments in her left hand. So you got the Ten Commandments in your left hand, which say don't make any graven image. And the Ten Commandments that say don't make any graven image are on a graven image. That's how you know that you're dealing with an absolute fraud. This is a fraud. He is a fraud. Kirk explaining the profound impact of a statue, which God forbids us to even make. If this is the man you want to trust with your doctrines related to whether or not you should celebrate Christmas or whether or not you should believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, which of course he made all of those Left Behind movies, which promoted and promulgated that false doctrine. He has been doing this since the beginning. Was he ever really converted to Christ or has he always been a Masonic plant? That's the question I have now. And we'll get a little more into his sister in a, in, as we go on in the podcast, but think about who's leading us and who they're allowing to lead us through the media and especially through false Christian media. And, and that represents both the Old and the New Testament, but they believe that morality was not something that could be imposed externally by a king. Just absolutely insane. Every time I see that, I, I, I'm dumbfounded and, and I'm the one that made it. So, I mean, it's just unbelievable the length, breadth, and height of the evil of this guy. And going on, so I want to just address the horned Baphomet hand sign that he used. This comes from uh, documents related to masonry, and this, this horn sign is called Sign of the Horns. And we had uh, Anton LaVey, who was speaking there, was, he's dead now, but he claimed to be essentially the high priest of the satanic um, church for North America, or at least for the U.S. And you could see here, uh, lots of politicians used it. The people use it all the time. Here's Pat Robertson using it. So it happens in the church too. Here you got Kenneth Copeland, T.D. Jakes making the 666 sign. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, Pastor Robert Furrow making it. Um, Chuck Vuelo, John Hagee. So there's once and then there's another time. So maybe if it happens once, it's an accident. But twice? It's probably happened way more times than that. This is Joseph Prince. We'll catch him on another uh, video making the 666 sign. Uh, Bob William. Um, Doug Batchelor. These are people I don't really know. Someone uh, made a video showing all these people doing this. Andrew Woods. I know who Chuck Missler is. I don't know who Zach Poonon is, but Pastor Greg Laurie. I remember him, of course. I mean, all throughout the R.C. Sproul, Jesse Duplantis, Benny, Benny Hinn, uh, Jimmy Swaggart, all of these guys and that are rolling in the big money. You could be pretty well sure that they too are throwing these sigils even long before we began to really notice it and come awake. I mean, Jimmy Swagger and Jesse Duplantis, those look like pictures from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, some of those. Now here we're gonna look at uh, DC Talk, a video that I, I put together of them in a, in a live um, video they did for uh, their song called Be In The Light. And there's all kinds of sigils in that, but I'm just gonna show you them throwing the, um, the hand, the Baphomet hand signs, but Toby McKeon is Toby Mac, Michael Tate, and Kevin Mac Smith. He's really the one that is so slimy. And I believe that he's, I did some stuff on him with the Amy Grant uh, research I did last year, which showed that I believe he was going full alphabet, alphabet soup, if you know what I mean at this point. So he was a plant right from the beginning. And let me show you what he did in this video. 
Okay, so this is, there's no sound to this. So this is the concert. Look, there's a light in a very dark place. And it's, of course, it's got diamonds on it. Triangles going up, triangles going down, which represents as above, so below. We'll talk about that a little later. What that really means, I'll show you um, what, it, what it is. So this is getting going, and I'm going to jump forward. So here's that Kevin Max guy. Lift his hand. Oh, what's that? Of course, the same exact thing that Kirk did. So he does that there. It's very clear he's doing it. And then he's like here. It looks to me like he, the way he's sitting, it's like he's casting a spell. I, f I really feel like he was very knowledgeable of the witchcraft component of what he was doing. And I think Toby Mac was and is too. And you can look at all of his album covers. Toby made an album called I, I, I on it, which um, we're still all seeing I all over it. So there's that light again with the upward and downward pointing triangles. That's very strongly represented in masonry. And then as we go, you're going to see him lift his hand here in a second and do, do it again. There's Toby doing it. He's on the left. Let me go back. That's Toby right there. Slow motion. Toby. So they both are doing it. How is it that that's both happening now? Is it happening by suggestion? Or are they, are they saying, oh, this is about rock and roll? Is that the exoteric meaning, which is the meaning that the masses are supposed to believe, that they mean rock on, basically? No, it's a salute to Satan. It's a mesmerization tactic that they're using on the people. And then you'll see it here again. Look how the light shines on it. Looks literally like a devil head. So this stuff has been going on forever. He's not alone. I showed you all of those images because I want you to see that for those of you that think, oh, Kirk didn't mean to do it. It's just, uh, it just happened. He didn't, he didn't mean it. Um, could it happen to anybody. Well, I, I do believe that people that are demonized do it and they don't realize it. I've been a lot around someone I know for sure is demonized and I've seen this person do it time and time again. And I don't actually believe that they meant mean to do it. They're not thinking, oh, I'm going to throw a curse right now. It just, it's just one of those things. I think the enemy makes their hand feel comfortable in that position, right? Jesse Duplantis, right? Benny Hinn, right? Um, Jimmy Swagger. So, okay. So now leaving on from that, I want to address the Christmas aspect of Kirk Cameron because he's I'm going to show you after this a presentation that he gave um, to um, Liberty University trying to convince them that everybody talking about not celebrating Christmas you just need to ignore them and that's where he's going to flash the 666 symbol, symbols 666 hand sigil over and over again but I kind of want to lay it up for you first by showing you this video of his movie that he made called Saving Christmas. Do you ever feel like Christmas has been hijacked? Hey, uh, where's Christian? How's he doing? Is he okay? Oh, he's fine, really. He's just, he's just not into Christmas this year, that's all. By all the commercialism and those who... Okay, this is the guy that's not into Christmas this year. He is made to look like everybody loves Raymond. He's made out to be the dumbest, teeth-picking buffoon uh, in the entire representation of this movie. And it's... Uh, He's just a, a jackass, frankly. Want to replace Merry Christmas with Happy Holidays or Season's Greetings, whatever that means. You okay? This is not what Christmas is all about. Some want to pull down every manger scene and tell us why our favorite Christmas traditions are wrong. News. We pull down the manger scenes because they're graven images that our God told us not to make or do and that we're supposed to worship Him in spirit and in truth. He's, he will never go directly at the scriptures, guys. You need to understand he's preaching to you from Satan's playbook, which is outside of scripture. Satan will indeed use the Bible and twist it up and use it against you like he tried to do to Jesus. But this guy, Kirk, he's staying outside of it and he's just making uh, fictional representations that make people that actually honor God and dishonor uh, idolatry. Christmas, I'll, I'm going to give show you some receipts in a minute that it's based on Sol Invicta, which is the, the worship of the unconquered sun that the Romans practiced. It's based on Saturnalia, which is the worship of Saturn, which represents Satan. I mean, 
there's no lacking of information out there that you could find in five Google searches to find out the pagan origins of Christmas. And of course, this guy's actually gonna address them here. And of course, Chris is just, I mean, uh, Kirk is just gonna look at him like he's an idiot. Watch. Flash, not in the Bible. That's a pagan idol symbol. It was the winter solstice. Jesus was not born in December. It's exactly what the Druids did. It's all true. Everything he said was true, but he's saying it like he sounds like an idiot. And look at the look on Kirk's face. It's like a carjacking, but like of our religion. And guess what? Santa got in the car, kicked Jesus out, and was like, rolling, rolling, rolling. Yes. And look at him, rolling, rolling, like it's not serious. And just took it. Isn't it time somebody spoke up? Man, Everything wanna, you see inside there? It's I want to go back and look at that smirk on his face. It's like a carjacking, but like Watch of this. our religion. And guess what? Santa got in the car, kicked Jesus out, and was like, rolling, 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 and took and just took it. Isn't it time? Didn't need to press stop. Hold on. Let me get there again. It's not what Christmas is all about. Some want to pull down every manger scene and tell us why our favorite Christmas traditions are wrong. Newsflash, not in the Bible. That's a pagan idol symbol. It was exactly. the winter solstice. Jesus was not born in December. It's exactly what the Druids did. It's like a carjacking, but like of our religion. And guess what? Santa got in the car, kicked Jesus out, and was like, rolling, 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 and took and just took it. Isn't it time? See that smirk? He's just laughing at all of us that have done our research. He's laughing, and he's going to, if you haven't done your research, that's the man to persuade you to go ahead and do idolatry and break God's law. And by the way, it says that no idolater in the book of Revelation gets in to the kingdom of heaven, to the new heaven and the new earth. And this guy wants to lead us all to hell. I'm somebody and he's laughing up. about it. He's got a character wearing a Santa outfit. That, I mean, if that's not a false God, then who is? Everything you see inside there, it's all about Christmas. It's all about Jesus. Live from the pit. Complete and utter lie. Wasn't born in the winter. I know you love Christmas and you want it to be all about what it's all about. The tree is forbidden in Jeremiah this 10. This Christmas, dive headfirst into all of the joy, the dancing, the celebration, the feasting, the imagination and traditions. That Imagination. Interesting that he would use that. Delve into the feasting. The feastings that are based on winter solstice, pagan activities that the pilgrims that he seems to want to venerate that would not do it. They actually outlawed it. This, this guy, this guy is such Glorify a clown. Glorify the true reason for the season. What a clown. What is that like called the worm or what some kind of R movie did? What a clown. They're dancing. Imagination and, celebrating and traditions evil wickedness that glorify the true reason for the season which is Satan it always has been Woo, work Holy Spirit ha can I get an amen I yeah. see work Holy Spirit that right there is a sin against the Holy Spirit there's no Holy Spirit involved here that right there was very sinful and he sounded rather effeminate at the same time the scales oh my. Are falling off. Glory. Ah, glory. his scales are falling off and he does like a pelvic move, glory. And he, who are you glorifying other than Satan? He is glorifying Satan. They're making, a, they're making a joke of God's word. They're making a joke of the truth. Join me and my family. And together, let's put Christ back into Christmas. Christ was never there. By the way, Christmas comes from the word that the Catholic gave us called Christ and Mass. The Mass is the ongoing, unbloody sacrifice of Jesus. They say he sacrificed every time that the Eucharist is given. Every time you take of communion, that's another sacrifice of Jesus over and over again. They call it the ongoing, unbloody sacrifice of Jesus. And this whole thing is a death cult. And the winter solstice celebrations, the 25th date, is based on the day that Nimrod was said to have been reincarnated as a fir tree. So let's just look at that uh, really briefly. I've done so many long form studies, you know, Chad and I did 25 reasons uh, Christmas is satanic um, two or three years ago at his place in Texas. We did this and I will just briefly touch on that 
I'm not going to go very deep because this isn't supposed to be about Christmas, but this is supposed to be just to prove what a wolf in sheep's clothing we're dealing with when we talk about this man. He's a douchebag. I'm sorry. I use a bad word. This is one of the worst human beings on earth. So I already told you about Christ, uh, Christ and mass, uh, that that's how the word Christmas came about. And the ongoing unbloody sacrifice of Christ is the mass. But Jesus said it's finished on the cross before his death, burial and resurrection. He now sits at the right hand of the father. He's no longer pinned to a cross and he's no longer a little bitty baby in a manger, uh, both of whom would be impotent. But Satan loves to present Jesus as impotent. And that's not what he is. Um, I, you can pause the screen if you want to see more about the unbloody sacrifice of the mass. I'm not going to go on that with that too much. Also, I want to talk about the tree. Learn not the way of the heathen. Jeremiah 10, 2 through 5 says, Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. So what are heathen? Heathen are those that practice idolatry. It's characteristic of these nations. And hence the word came to designate idolaters. Idolaters are heathen. So God's telling us not to learn the way of idolaters in Jeremiah 10. Then he goes on to say, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Then he says, for the customs of the people, of the heathen, the custom of the idolaters are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the ax. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. So it is clear that the heathen were practicing idolatry by bringing in a tree that was cut down in the form of a graven image. And by the way, it's also a type of phallic, just like an obelisk, which I'll show you a little later. So without going completely, totally deep in on this presentation, I got stuff on the origin of the tree. If you ever, anybody wants me to send you a PDF version of this, I'll be happy to. Um, I, uh, I've got all the research on the winter solstice. The 25th day was the date of the birth of the sun god Ra in ancient Egypt mythology. And thus, it's the source of the winter solstice festival. The shortest days of the year had passed. And now the days are beginning to get longer. It's all based in paganism. Beyond a shadow of doubt, it's related to Nimrod and Semiramis. It's related to Sol Solus Invicta, which is the um, worship of the unconquered sun that the Romans did. It's also related to um, Saturnalia, which I go into great... Uh, uh, length on this presentation. Saturn as a demonic deity. We're not to make mention of the names of these false gods, Saturnalia, and how it affects Christmas with certain uh, traditions that, that extend from that. So I'm telling you, uh, all of it came down to debaucherous winter celebrations where there was roll inversion, partying, uh, orgies, and the like. So that is why we have a drunken festival to this day. It has nothing at all to do with Jesus Christ. And that is what Kirk Cameron is trying to get you to worship. He wants you to return to that and has no biblical basis for it. And never does he argue from the Bible about it using the same scriptures. He can't answer to the scriptures that we give. He just makes excuses and say, oh, you're a fuddy-duddy. You're an Ebenezer Scrooge. You're a Ba humbug. All of that stuff. This guy is a joke. You're, Kirk will never see this, but if he did, you are a big fat joke. We see right through you. Right through you. You are just like those de demon-filled beings in the movie They Live that I put in the thumbnail. That's you. That's you. So clearly. So now, again, if you need me to send you any of these presentation decks, anybody wants the PDF version of it, just email me and I'll be happy to send it to you for free so you can use them. Any presentation I've ever done where you saw me using a podcast, I mean, a, basically a PowerPoint, it's, I can send you a PDF version of it so you can have the materials. All that's free of charge. And if you would like to donate, of course, to get the materials, that's fine. But everything we do is free here on this channel. So... And that will give me a good chance to take a little bit of a break. We've been at it almost an hour, I think, 49 minutes. This is a good time to take, go to the break room. And when I come back, I'm going to show you the video of him giving the speech in Liberty University to Liberty University students about uh, why they should do Christmas. Because um, if you think Christmas is paganism, then you shouldn't eat Chinese food. Again, not a biblical argument, but we'll come back right after the break room. They think they're getting away with 
neighborhood They think that you don't see What they've done to your body They rob, kill and destroy They take without fear All that which we hold so dear See it coming and they won't know the moment you bring them down so low. They'll even deny that it's your mighty end. And out of the beds they won't stand. They won't stand. Jezebel's judgment day, it has arrived Deny repentance, they all die Jesus gave us so much space that she wouldn't turn The fullness of the judgment so well learned They won't see it coming they won't know The moment you bring them down so low They'll even deny That it's your mighty end When out of their beds they won't stand They won't stand they won't stand, stand, they won't stand. No, they won't see it coming. you bring them down so low They'll even deny that it's your mighty end And out of the beds they won't stand They won't stand They won't stand Thank you so much for joining us for another live stream podcast. Just wanted to use this time to tell you about our other channels and websites. You'll find links below for our music backup channel, for our brand new Jesus Not Paul channel, as well as for our blog and our website, as well as the website for JesusNotPaul.org. Hope you'll check it out. There's free materials you can find on those websites, especially JesusNotPaul.org. Everything we provide is free of charge, but we also have a PayPal link below for donations for those who feel led. And we really appreciate your support to help us continue to making content that's helping people find the truth and to find Jesus Christ as their Messiah. Thanks so much for your support and enjoy the podcast. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are talking about all the sigil magic being conducted by so many people that are operating in the church. And their purpose is to turn us to idolatry, to turn us to masonry, to turn us to worshiping the sun. You know, the whole point of the Christmas season is the worship of the unconquered sun because the shortest days pass and the days are getting longer and the focus 
all focus of worship is the sun. And that's why you look at the back of your dollar bill and at the top of the pyramid is the sunburst coming through with the all seeing eye. And that sun represents Satan and his all seeing eye, not the all seeing eye of God. They call it the all seeing eye of providence, but they believe that Satan is Lucifer, the light bearer. And that's why he is as mainly P hall and Albert Pike have pointed out. He is the light bearer to them. They believe deep down that Lucifer getting us to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which God told us not to, they believe that he was the one that set us free instead of putting us in bondage as Jesus well taught that sin, sin is bondage, sin is slavery. But he, he, Satan taught, they believe taught us to have freedom to do what we want. Hence, Aleister Crowley saying, do what thou wilt is the whole of the law. And that's what they believe. And they believe that Lucifer is the one that freed them to do that, even though, as Jesus said, they are bound and captured and made enslaved by sin. And that is what Kirk Cameron is trying to call you into. He wants you in sin for sure. Absolutely. So now I just want to show you that Kirk and Jonathan Kanu also has Christmas celebrations and being of the Hebrew faith and, and coming from Judaism, you wouldn't think that he would do that. You would think that they would know better, but like all other people that are practicing any form of religion, especially that is related to the Hebrew scriptures. When you get off of those Hebrew scriptures that uh, Moses and the other prophets gave to us, gave to them first and then to the rest of us through, through it, through them, we've been raised up as stones unto Abraham, essentially, you would think all of us would be in, in agreement on the fact that there shouldn't be idolatry in the church. But first Corinthians chapter eight, opened the door in, uh, w within what calls itself Christianity. But, uh, you would think that he, that is Jonathan Kahn wouldn't celebrate Christmas too, but I'll show you some evidence of, of that, at least in some photos. So let me show you, um, what I'm talking about right here. So I'm, I didn't put any sound on this, but there you got Joel Olstein with his wife. I think her name's Victoria. Big image of her behind her. And she said some freaky things. There they are with their Christmas tree. Of course, they've got a $10.5 million mansion, according to um, that thing I got. There's Rodney Howard Brown, the laughing prophet. There's their family Christmas thing. That's Stephen Furtick, Elevation in Charlotte, North Carolina, wearing a giant cross. And I don't know what that is on his neck there. Of course, there's a Christmas tree there. Here's the Elevation musical crew. Um, big cross behind them, of course. Paula Abdul. I'm not, not Paula White, I mean. <laughs> Sorry, Paula Abdul. Big Christmas tree. Big mansion. Next, we'll have good old Benny Hinn. Big Christmas tree. Wearing the white frock to make you think he's holy. $9 million mansion in Italy. That is Rod Parsley says, when you stand at the tree of temptation, and he's got a Christmas tree behind him. There he is with his family celebrating. That's the lady from Daystar, Television Network, Joni Lamb. They just decorate everything. Christmas is huge there in Bedford, Texas, Daystar Television. That's Bill Johnson from Bethel. Christmas trees abound on the Bethel, Bethel stage. They're the ones that say bring heaven to earth. And uh, it's an as above, so below reference. There's the, all the pyramids and stuff on the Jesus culture. They've got the head of the Ishtar in the left corner. I know these are going by fast, but I'm just showing you they all celebrate Christmas. Jesus Culture Playlist. There's the Hillsong Singers right there. And of course, there's their Christmas thing with downward pointing pentagrams. The same thing as the Baphomet. Old Hillsong. All of these are Satanist. Every one of them. This guy, I want to pause this. Let me go back to him. Oh, I need to go back just to spell. I don't know who this guy is right here. But I notice he's got in the moon, it looks like a moon shape. There's a, an eagle and also an eight-pointed star. And the eight-pointed star represents Ishtar. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, that's always been her symbol. And then there's Kenneth Copeland. What's interesting about that is, of course, they always, in their graphics, they always have upward and downward pointing triangles to represent the pyramid to show their masons. There's his wife, Gloria Copeland. That's their church. Christmas trees abound. God forbids it. Christmas tree behind them. There's the old Pope. I had to tie him in. Of course, he's kissing an idol. Christmas tree behind him with hexagrams on it. Now, right there, you could see that's the Vatican Square or St. Peter's Square, as they call it. 
you could see there there's a giant obelisk that was actually brought in from Egypt, which represents the male member, that is the male parts, the penis of the sun god Ra. And of course, the tree next to it is just another phallic. So all of this is phallic. That obelisk is coming up through an eight-pointed star of Ishtar. I'll show you that in a minute. More phallics. More him kissing on little baby Jesus as they represent him. Now, I wanted to show you this because there's Kenneth Copeland with none other than the Pope. There he's again praying with him. There you got T.D. Jakes in front of his big old tree wearing the red and black of Satan. He's got a $4.3 million house there and his daughters, he bought a $4 million house for her. Here's that Prince guy again. Uh, this time before I showed you him doing the Baphomet hand sign. Now he's doing the 666. He's very effeminate. Looks like he's wearing makeup. The haircuts are super effeminate. They tell you who they are. There's good old Jesse Duplantis there. He's telling you Merry Christmas too. And of course, he's got all the expensive house and cars. And there we got Kirk Cameron again in front of a big old tree. Where is that? He just loves it. He just throws it in your face. And of course, his sister is the queen of Christmas on the Hallmark Channel. She calls herself that. There he is. Got Ray Comfort involved. Ray Comfort seems so holy, doesn't he? He seems like such an advocate for Jesus Christ. And there he is with the cross. Got, got a cross on an ornament. The three crosses on an ornament. On a pagan tree. And Jonathan Kahn. Oh, wait. I'm going to show you what that. See in his right hand, he's got that Vulcan hand salute. That actually stems from um, a rabbinical um, Shekinah blessing, which represents the feminine divine. I'll show you that uh, later. And then, of course... Here it is, Celebrate Christmas with Jonathan Kahn, special broadcast, all day Christmas, starting 9 p.m. Eastern, Christmas Eve. Crazy, right? There he is with the trees behind him, Gateway Church trees, Chris Tomlin all seeing eye. I'm going to show you his, got a Christmas albums, Christmas tours. I don't know if those are his kids. There's his big old house. These guys are super blessed to do their paganism in this world. Old uh, Creflo Dollar in his Jingle Jam 2016. Now look behind him. He's got the upward pointing triangles and the downward pointing triangles. As above, so below. There he is. And what is that car there? I don't, I don't even know. That looks pretty dang fancy. It's probably several hundred grand for that car. $3.4 million home in Atlanta. Got a corporate jet. This one's interesting. I think this might be Hillsong or it could be Bethel. I'm not sure which, but look at that eight pointed star they use at Christmas. That's the star of Ishtar of the feminine, the so-called feminine divine. I'm going to show you that in a second, how that's represented. There you got Joyce Meyer wearing none other than a leopard skin print and revelation. The beast comes as a leopard. That is the antichrist as the beast, the last day's beast. And they always wear leopard print. It's not just because it's fashionable. It's because it's the beast. Here she is doing the Christmas thing, and there's her estate. So it's not just Kirk Cameron, but he has definitely been, him and his sister, the tip of the spear to get Christians to think they can do paganism. And we've had enough trouble with that over the years. And with the help of Paul and 1 Corinthians uh, 8, uh, you know, that's why we have all, all this paganism today. And people don't listen to Jesus Christ because, as I'll show you, in the book of Revelation, when he talks about even eating things sacrificed to idols, he says, no way. And I'm going to show you more about that later. Whereas Paul's like, fine, do it. It's okay. As long as you know, it's not God. You know, so this is, if you won't ever wonder why I have a problem with Paul, that would be it. All right. So now I'm going to play the video of Kirk Cameron speaking to the Liberty University students. And I'm going to show you how many times he conducts sigil magic on them as a method of mesmerization and persuasion. It's very obvious when you see it. Um, actually, first, let me just show you really quick. He's going to use the 666. And this, of course, is represented um, in uh, masonry. It's a phallic sign, but it also represents the yoni, which is the women's body part. And here you could see um, the representation of the 666. Remember, your boy... Um, Trump, he was always doing it. That's, it was so obvious he was a mason. He was a plant that Christians were convinced that he was of God by people like Jonathan Kahn when he was not. And they're still convinced by it. And all of that stuff with the QAnon, all of that is just a psyop on you people. 
Now look at all these six, six, sixes that all these famous people are doing. You got, um, your lady Gaga's your, you got the Pope in there, you got Obama doing it. You've got, um, Beyonce doing it. You've got, um, so many people, Justin Bieber, all these famous people. Here's another one showing a bunch of famous people doing it um, through the years. Here's another one. Actors, Leonardo DiCaprio, Johnny Depp. Um, who's the Ch Jack, Jackie Chan, Lady Gaga, the guy that sang that happy. What's his name? I can't remember his name. Um, the girl actor from um, the witchcraft show, Harry Potter. Who's this rapper guy? What's his name? Oh, I can't remember all their names. At any rate, of course, Beyonce right in the middle. Bill Clinton, Tony Blair, Michael Jackson. Um, in the bottom right, that looks, I'm not sure. I almost thought that was Will Smith, but I don't know all these people, guys. I don't really pay that much attention to what goes on in the, in the, in the world of Hollywood, but you've all seen all this stuff before. Justin Timberlake. They're always wearing shirts with pentagrams on them, which represent the, the falling stars. The, star, the falling stars represent Satan. Here's Michael Jackson when he's a kid doing 666, and there he is as an adult. There you have the chief. Um, she's actually doing both. She's doing the yoni with her, her right hand on our left side, and with her left hand, she's doing the phallic one. Crazy. And lest you think that religious people don't do it, there's Pope John Paul on the far right of that image doing it. Then you've got um, Pope, so-called Pope Francis doing it. You got TD Snakes. I mean, Jake's doing it. You've got um, uh, Joel Olstein doing the plethora of all those hand signs and all of these images, including the 666. Here you got Kenneth Copeland doing them all. And Kenneth Copeland, T.D. Jakes again. You've got Paula White doing it. You've got Rod, uh, Rod Parsley doing it. And you even got what a lot of people don't realize, Charles, Charles, um, oh, what is his last, Stanley. He, I 100% believe he's a Mason. There's the Pope doing it again. So these people have been doing this stuff all along to us, and it's been happening in the so-called church. People that are calling themselves Christians are casting sigil magic on you. And you need to believe that. And I'm going to show you good old Kirk doing that with his explanation of how he somehow loosely relates you. You can't eat Chinese food if you won't celebrate Christmas. And let's watch that. So slimy. He's probably looking at his friend. I'm about to trick everybody. Good morning, everybody. Hey. Love in the spotlight. This is awesome. I'm so excited to be here. I'm a dad of six kids, and so I come at this from a little bit different perspective. I'm so, I'm so happy. Interesting he said six, because he's about to show you so many sixes, you aren't gonna know what to do with them all. That you're here. Now, I'm gonna help you figure this whole thing out. I want you to put your Lecrae by. There you go, just did it. Back it up just a hair. Hey, glasses on. Did it again. But and I want you to... Hard not to there you go. <laughs> I'm going to have to press pause so many times. Think of this sacred secular split, this good bad split. And I want to teach you something that my buddy James taught me. Listen carefully. This is very, very important. I'm going to make this bigger and just move me out of the way. I want you guys to be able to really clearly see what he's doing. Important. Remember, he's about to try to persuade people something with a terrible argument. It's just the worst argument of all time. There's no scriptures being used. And the whole time he's used car salesmaning them, but he's also got to put them under a spell to get them to actually look past the delusion of the silly argument he makes. One of the most overlooked and deadly evils in the modern world today is Chinese food. <laughs> Many people see that. People don't believe that, but any serious and committed Christian. When they bounce it like that, when they're bouncing it, um, let me make myself more available to be seen. I want to show you something. I noticed that they all do a bounce motion like three times at least one, two, three with it. And I think to them, that's like an incantation. It's like a, 
a way of making it um, effective. It's like part of the spell casting. Actually, I'm just going to leave myself here in case I want to do that again. I'll just move myself over more. There we go. All right, let's play. Christian, with just a moment of reflection, will understand very it. quickly. Still doing it. See that? Still doing it. With what I'm about to tell you, that Chinese food in all its forms must be entirely rejected. Many people do not aware of, are not aware of the very serious again serious nature of the Chinese food question, and they participate in this very dangerous activity unknowingly. Number one, Chinese food is an expression again of the Eastern philosophy of monism, it. oneism, the all is one philosophy of the East and its mysticism. And this food is not only again only coming from the East, again. the place, the very heart of the most Still. sophisticated forms of paganism, but by its very nature and composition, it reflects the Eastern monistic philosophy that is so wicked and perverted. Biblical Christianity, on the other hand, declares that God is a trinity, that is one God in three separate and distinct persons. Yes? One God with Father, Son, Holy Spirit, distinct and separate, co-equal, co-existent in the one triune Godhead. That is why, if you do your research, you'll find that chefs in the West are taught when they prepare and present their dishes to put the, the food on one plate, but in the one plate, you have the separate food groups remaining distinct from one another. Think about it. Chinese food, in contrast, seeks to undo all of this. And they take the vegetables, the salad, the meat and the sweets, and mix them all together in an attempt to destroy diversity and set up a food monad, a food oneness. This is obviously evil and perverted. It corrupts the very nature of our God. Plus, combining the sweet and sour flavors together are done in accordance with the Eastern philosophy of yin and yang. Yin and yang, sweet and sour. What could be more pagan than that? <laughs> but there's more. Because of the perverted nature of Chinese Again. food, it is naturally unpalatable for the human tongue. It is naturally repulsive to the human taste buds and therefore vast quantities of MSG, monosodium glutamate, mono Sodium glutamate is added to make it taste better. And we know now that MSG, as it's popularly called, is also a poison. It causes hyperactivity in children and cancer in adults. So not only is Chinese food pagan, it's also poisonous. It's also idolatrous. Do your research on Wikipedia and you'll find that it was likely Nimrod during the time of the Tower of Babel who it developed the concept of Chinese food to feed to the people in an attempt to subvert the true faith. And they believed that as they ate the food, because of the MSG, they would become addicted to it. And what scripture has he used? And what kind of stupid... For us, for anyone to receive this explanation without addressing the scriptures that we've already gone through, and we'll go through some more here in a second, I mean, he's completely not applying the Bible to it. What about Jeremiah 10, two through six, which says, do not the way of the heathen who are idolaters who bring a tree and deck it with silver and gold into their homes. And they believed over time as they It's a bait and switch. Ate the sweet and sour pork, they would become committed to the philosophy of yin and yang. It's intrinsic to the very food itself. And if you don't believe this, well, let me put it bluntly. You're your Chinese food addiction is showing. You're clearly just stubbornly refusing to put aside your pagan traditions, or you simply haven't done your homework and you don't know your history. Well, how did this stuff get to the West? All the way from China, all the way over here, and to California. Well, 
It was the Bishop of Rome who introduced this Chinese food into the Christian world. I mean, did not the Bishop at Rome, which at the time was Pope Damasus during the fourth century, did not Constantine, did not they all bring in the paganization of Christianity during that time? Do you see how he's literally making light of actual real history and making it seem like it's just a non sequitur, like it doesn't matter that paganism was mixed in with Christianity, that we can adopt these things from other cultures and put them in with us. And that would be fine if it was some cultural way of cooking food and using spices and stuff. That's one thing. But adopting the pagan worship of the sun, of Sol Invicta, of Saturnalia, of winter solstice, all this stuff was paganism. There were human beings were sacrificed to these false gods of Baal and Ashtaroth and Ishtar and uh, Molech. So he's asking us to just overlook it like it would be just eating some spices from another region of, of the of the face of the earth. This is this is so silly at its at its face. None other than the Pope. Do we ever read about Chinese food in the New Testament? Of course not. Do we read about it in the Baptist Confession of Faith? So now he's saying because we are, our argument is Christmas isn't in the Bible. We're not asked to do it. We know Jesus wasn't born in the winter. Absolutely couldn't have been. The shepherds wouldn't have been out at night past the fall harvest, and neither would there have been called a census or taxation where they have to travel across the country during the shortest days of the year and the coldest days. This is ridiculous. He's asking you to tell a lie and say Jesus was born on the 25th when that is the known day of the birth of rebirth, supposedly of Nimrod on the 25th day as a fir tree. It's also said to be the birth of Saturn and Saturnalia. Guys, man, this guy is so wicked. Of you course are, not. You are so wicked, Kirk. You are such an evil person. I would not let you be around my dog. You, I wouldn't let you anywhere near my children, anywhere near my dog, my family. I wouldn't let you near anything I own. I wouldn't let you near me. You are a disgusting human being that if you don't repent, you're going to the bottom rung of hell because you're the Pied Piper for evil in the church. So there you have it. This can only mean that this is nothing other than a plot of Rome. 666, again, he's done it how many times? Rome to destroy God's true faith, and the Baptist Confession is totally opposed to all Chinese food. Just stupid, man. You're an idiot. And have you ever noticed how fanatical people... You know, he's not an idiot. He thinks we are. That's not a stupid man. That is not a stupid guy. People are about Chinese food. I mean, not only do the people eat the stuff, they'll pay money for it. Not only that, they'll actually set up and support a whole restaurants that are given over wholly to the production of this evil, poisonous, idolatrous, pagan, and subversive food. And if you try to get people to quit eating Chinese food, try that. Try to get someone to quit eating the Chinese food, and they'll look at you like you're the crazy one. I'm sorry, but you cannot slap a Jesus sticker on your chicken chow mein and say it's all right for a Christian to eat it. Like Luther before me, here I stand. And if others do not like it, then it must be truth over friendship. He's going straight to hell. That guy's going straight to the bottom of hell. Pretty good, huh? He's laughing about it. No, I mean, I mean the arguments. The arguments are pretty good, aren't they? I mean, that could be pretty convincing, especially with an English accent. Those guys can influence a lot of people. Look at all those young people went to Bible college in order. <laughs> they went to Bible college thinking they were going to learn the truth, but instead they've been subjected to people like him for four years, and they come out twice the children of hell as, as he is. He is a mason and a satanic plant in the church. But it's not right. It's all wrong. But you could replace... Look, look, look. Let's get it in one more solid time when he, after he says, that's not right, it's all wrong. Boom. Boom.
Does it look familiar? 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 They're all doing the same thing, including him. Don't tell me it's not intentional. They're all doing it on purpose because they're Masons and they're doing sigil magic against you. But you could replace Christmas for the word Chinese food in every one of those arguments, and that's exactly what you and I have been given by a bunch of other people, and we're swallowing it hook, line, and sinker. Look at that. He's saying the people telling you the truth to stay away from paganism that God hates, and he's hated it since the beginning. He said, yeah, thou shalt have no other gods before me. All of these things we're doing at Christmas represent other gods. Saturnalia, Sol Invicta, Odin in the form of Santa Claus. All of that stems from pagan worship. There is no denying it. Receipt after receipt after receipt. Very easy to discover. But he's saying we're pulling people in hook, line, and sinker. He is Satan's minion right there. That is Satan's minion. And as far as... Um, as far as the food goes, sacrifice to idols, look here what Jesus had to say. He said uh, to the church at Pergamos, but I have a few things against thee. This is in verse 14, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols. So, and to commit fornication. He goes on over here in, in Revelation 2, and by the way, celebrating Christmas is a uh, spiritual fornication with other gods. You're committing spiritual adultery when you, you live in service to other false gods. You are an adulterer, a spiritual adulterer, and idolaters don't get into the new heaven and new earth. Revelation makes that very clear in chapter 20 and 21. Now look here, he said it again to the church at Thyatira. He said, notwithstanding, I have a few things against you because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. So it's kind of ironic that he drew the correlation to Chinese food. Now, I love Asian food. Man, I, I love all of it. Japanese, Chinese, Thai, Cambodian, Vietnamese. It does not matter. But one thing that I've done because of Jesus speaking against eating things sacrificed to idols is if I go into a place that's serving Asian food and they've got their idols in there, I don't eat there. I don't take takeout from there because I know that the chickens, the beef, everything that died had that food blessed in the name of that idol that they serve at this Asian restaurant. So I'm not going there anymore. And I know some people laughed at me about that, but Jesus is adamant about not eating things sacrificed to idols. And this is what you find in some Chinese restaurants or Thai restaurants. Man, I love Thai curries. Love it. And it's all of these images of their idols, graven images that God forbids. So if I can't get Chinese food because I don't want to go and eat from a place where they are blessing their food in the name of their, their demon God, they need to repent and serve God the Father through Jesus Christ. If I don't go there for that reason, because I want to please God, that is a good thing. That is a good thing when you are willing to exclude something from your life to please the God that said in the second commandment, thou shalt not make any graven image of anything in heaven above or the earth beneath or the sea under the earth. Don't even make them. People say, well, you, well we, he says just not to bow to him. No, no, no. He said don't even make them to begin with, which means you should not have one in your collection. And again, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 8, which opens the door to people eating things in restaurants like these and going against Jesus' words to not eat things sacrificed to idols. Even John wrote in 1 John 521, the last thing he says in that epistle, he wrote, little children, keep yourselves from idols. The tree is an idol, according to Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2. Heathen and idolaters bring trees into their homes. But Paul, he said, it's a concerning thing. Therefore, the eating of those things that are sacrificed unto idols, we know an idol is nothing in the world. If it's nothing in the world, why did God say in the first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me? And he said, there is none other God but one. That's true, they're just demons. For though there be many that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, or there be gods many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him and the one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. 
He goes, Howbeit, there's not in every man that, that, that knowledge. For some with conscience of the idol unto this hour eat it as a thing offered unto an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. But meat commendeth us not to God, for neither if we eat are we the better, neither if we eat are we eat not are we the worse. So he's saying, it doesn't really matter if you have a strong conscience. You can eat things sacrificed to idols, but if your conscience is weak, then you've got a problem because the demon isn't really God. But then why, if that's the case, why did Jesus twice in Revelation say, do not eat things sacrificed to idols? And that's part of the sin they're committing. And then he goes on and says, repent or else I'll come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. If you're doing this sort of thing, he says that to Pergamos. Then to Thyatira, he says to these idolaters and I, uh, that serve Jezebel, which by the way, the statue that he was promoting was a female statue, basically representing Ishtar Ashtaroth, the feminine so-called divine. So the, if you watched before the break, we went to great depth on that. So go back and check that out if you're just joining us, We're talking about Kirk Cameron and his penchant for idolatry with actual graven images, one that he presented to Ben Shapiro, uh, we showed that before. And of course, the idea of making us all idolaters through the pagans, uh, multivariate paganism of Christmas. And uh, going on, uh, Jesus says to the church of Thyatira, he says uh, to those that uh, don't repent, he says, I will kill her children with death and all the churches shall know that I am he that which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I'll give unto every one of you according to your works. And one of the issues at hand is eating things sacrificed to idols. So this guy is promoting paganism and masonry. And if for, for those of you watching, if you've watched the whole thing, if you haven't go back and all the things I presented, I, there is absolutely no way to prove that what I'm saying to you is wrong. He has flashed sigil magic at you in the form of the Baphomet hand signs. He's using the 666 constantly. He's making unbiblical arguments that cause you to compromise and work for Satan himself. That's what he's done. And it is quite, quite evil. And let's see how far in, in we are because Samson's giving me that I need to go out sound. And if he is, I'm going to send you to break. We're an hour and 27 minutes in. So that's another 45 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and send. You know what? There's too many people here. You'll leave if I go to break. I'm going to stay. And if you hear Samson, Samson moaning, you'll know he just wants to go out. He's getting, he's really old now and he cries a lot if he wants to go out. Now, I want to talk about masonry in the church just to prove to you that it exists. And you could see, man, he's, he's really going at it. I'm going to go help him here in a second, but I want to show you this first. Look at this Kingstown Baptist Church erected 1951. Interesting, they use the word erect because there's the, the phallic obelisk on top. Organized 1926 by the Grand Lodge of Georgia. 50, AL 5954, AD 1954. Marshall A. Chapman calls himself the Grand Master, and it has literally the, the, the square and compass on it. So if you think there's no masonry in the church, there's this is on a lot of churches from those days, the Masonic symbolism. All right, I've got to tend to Samson. And if you know who he is, he's my dog. I'm going to go do that. I'm going to send you to the break room and we will be right back. Please don't leave or come back in about five minutes. See you then. They think they're getting away with it. Think that you don't see what they've done to your body. They rob, kill, and destroy. They take without fear all that which we hold so dear. But they won't see it coming. They won't know The moment you bring them down so low They'll even deny That it's your mighty end And out of the beds they won't stand They won't stand They won't stand. Jezebel's judgment day, it has arrived.
die repentance, they all die. Jesus gave us so much space that she wouldn't turn. The fullness of the judgment so well learned. They won't see it coming, and they won't know. Moment you bring them down so low They'll even deny That it's your mighty end And out of their beds They won't stand They won't stand They won't stand Stand no, they won't see it coming And they won't know The moment you bring them down so low They'll even deny that it's your mighty end. And out of the beds they won't stand. They won't stand. They won't stand. Stand. They won't stand. Thank you so much for joining us for another live stream podcast. Just wanted to use this time to tell you about our other channels and websites. You'll find links below for our music backup channel, for our brand new Jesus Not Paul channel, as well as for our blog and our website, as well as the website for JesusNotPaul.org. Hope you'll check it out. There's free materials you can find on those websites, especially JesusNotPaul.org. Everything we provide is free of charge, but we also have a PayPal link below for donations for those who feel led. And we really appreciate your support to help us continue to making content that's helping people find the truth and to find Jesus Christ as their Messiah. Thanks so much for your support and enjoy the podcast. Thanks everyone for waiting on me and good old Samson. He's just He's getting so much older and having a hard time. So anybody that knows him already, please give, throw out a prayer for the old guy. He's kind of hurting in his hips. You know how they get those giant breeds get pretty bad hip dysplasia. But I want to keep going. Uh, this is such an important episode. Let me turn that off. I'm going to turn this off. Such an important episode. So just showing you all the masonry in the church. It's, it's, really, it's just ridiculous. So easy to prove. And... Like I said at the onset, there's so many people that are Christians that identi identify masonry everywhere except in the church. And it's, it's befuddling to me. I wish that the ones that seem to have their eyes open that would, would um, talk about it more as far as it applies to the church. And of course, in the United States, we know that even there's a statue of Washington, George Washington in D.C. of him uh, in the same pose as the Baphomet. And... We know that on top of the Capitol building, that dome represents the womb in masonry. And then on top, there's a female archetype. And that is the feminine divine. And here's another uh, in, in, with a five-pointed star, a falling star in her hand. Of course, we've seen the Vatican a million times. There's the obelisk coming up through the eight-spoked wheel of Ishtar. And you see it from the top. And here's the ancient um, wheels of Ishtar as represented in ancient artwork. Of course, in the Vatican, they have the Pope's audience hall is in the shape of a serpent's head. It even looks like it's got the serpent fangs up at the front. Where are you speaking from? I mean, here's, here it is from the outside. I mean, they literally made the shape of the head of a serpent. There it is from the inside. So all of this stuff, obelisks, sun-related, this, this, the come stems from Egypt, Babylon, 
Um, this here is not the Washington Monument, but this is the, the Masonic dedication to Washington. I want to say this is in Alexandria. And of course, it's another phallic. And it's got the pillars in the front, almost like the Greek Parthenon. And there's the um, Masonic Square and Compass. And of course, here's the Washington Mo Monument that I just showed you. And it's the same as a obelisk that you saw in the Vatican Square. All of this is Egyptian symbolism. And it's in Washington. And the Washington Monument is coming up through a Vesca Pisces. And that Vesca Pisces represents the female genitalia. And all of this, the steeple is no different from a, um, an obelisk. That's what it's supposed to mean. And the cross itself represents the Egyptian auk. It's the male member going up into the feminine. And the obelisk, of course, I mean, the Vesca Pisces, you can see here, if, when you see cr Christian so-called fish symbols, it's nothing but the female genitalia. That's what it is. All of this stuff. And it all stems from the worship of the sun. You can see the sun god Ra here. He actually has a Egyptian ankh in his hand. And I showed you at the onset of the show what that represents. So we're not going to um, beat a dead horse on all that. So we know that on the back of the dollar bill, there's all kinds of Masonic, Masonic symbolism. Of course, the pyramid coming from Egypt with the all-seeing eye on the top of the sun god Ra. And uh, of course, you can see that represented here in this uh, Masonic art, the pyramid, the all-seeing eye. And of course, you know, all of these musicians and artists uh, cover one eye to show you the all-seeing eye. This also is sigil magic. They're conducting a spell on you. It's interesting that some of them will have like a lightning bolt under one eye too. And that lightning bolt represents Satan who fell from heaven as lightning. So this is what uh, Kirk Cameron ascribes to. The um, as above, so below, you have the downward pointing triangle represents uh, the feminine. It's the macrocosm. Um, it, it, the microcosm on the right represents the masculine. You see here Beyonce making the upward pointing triangle with her hand and putting the mic in the middle of it. It also looks like she's got scorpions on her outfit. So scorpions represent, represents Satan and demons. We know Jesus said we've been given power to tread on, on serpents and scorpions. And of course she's wearing one. You see here, good old Trump flashing all the sigils constantly did that the whole time. Many, um, many of these uh, world leaders do it. That's a, not Tony Blair, but the British prime minister that replaced him. I forget his name. Forgive me for that. You see here the other British uh, prime minister lady on the left with her hands like that. Of course, Angela Merkel did it constantly. The downward pointing triangle, Jay-Z constantly, I through. I've shown you this one already. Here's Trump doing it again. Here's uh, Tulsi Gabbard. This is an old one, but she did this several years ago. But, you know, they try to make her the poster child for, you know, leaving the Democratic Party and, and being all righteous, but they're all part of the Hegelian dialectics they present to us. Athletes were doing it, including, um, that's LeBron James, and of course, the singer Drake, and Kobe Bryant would do all this all the time, called himself the Black Mamba. I mean, guys, this is, it's all throughout the church, and it's throughout the world, but it's in the church too. Look here, uh, the beloved John MacArthur. Behind him, there's a cross and a downward pointing um, triangle that's behind him. This stuff is not, not on purpose that I believe this is Hillsong behind with the big pyramid shapes. All of these guys are Masons. They are literally the upward and downward pointing triangles and, and, and these shapes. They are literally trying to conduct sigil magic on people that want to serve God. I did all that stuff on Jesus culture. Same with them upward and downward pointing triangles, all seeing eye figures, um, and I've talked so much of this till I'm blue, blue in the face, and I'm just trying to show you that this is what Kirk Cameron is. This is what Jan, uh, Jonathan Kahn is. Here's a Br Brian and Katie Torwalt. They got an upward pointing uh, triangle shape and a downward pointing triangle shape that meet up on an all seeing eye. Please just stop it. Stop, stop thinking you're fooling us. We see, we see like Rowdy Roddy Piper and they live, we see. Look at this album cover for Jesus Culture. It's got a pyramid on it. And then if you look at it, it's got extended lines around it that form a 666. Chris Tomlin is also showing Masonic symbolism all the time. 
all seeing eye symbolism, darkened out eyes, casting crowns did it. They've got eight pointed stars, six pointed stars, celebrating Christmas, all of your favorite bands, Switchfoot, use the as above, so below tree with root uh, motif and then pentagrams on their album and the sun in the corner with the stair with the, the guy on the ladder going toward the sun, Toby Mac eye on it. Guys, these people casting crowns with the same motive of a tree above and tree below as above, so below. Are you guys starting to see that these people are demonic and satanic in the church? And that's what, um, Kirk Cameron is, he's satanic, just like them. And he's not the only one I've shown you so many things. Look at Lecrae's album looks just like a six, six, six on the album. Um, Christian music, Illuminati, DC talk, uh, uh, skillet did that awake album with the all seeing eye, Toby Mac, all seeing eye guys. It never ends when you look into this. I mean, I've done so much research on all this and it's everywhere you look. And so I just want you to understand as we wrap it up about Kirk Cameron, he's a Satanist. It's very clear. He serves the devil and he wants you to serve the devil. And he's meant to be a foil against little guys like me and others that speak against doing paganism in the church. And, but he's going to find himself against God. He's in a, like Gary said, they're all cultists. He's going to find himself against God. He is against God. And the ultimate result of that is busting hell wide open. I'm not going to say it syrupy for you or, or bite my tongue on that. He's going straight to hell. And I will actually, as I talk about that, I actually want to address that really quick. Let me go to the scriptures that actually mention that. I've got to get my safari up. There we go. And I'm going to show you where it talks about idolaters in the book of Revelation, how they don't get in. God warned us not to eat things sacrifice of idols. Revelation says that they, these people don't repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. In Jeremiah 10, verse 2 through 6, it says that the, the trees they bring in can't see nor hear nor walk. It's the same thing when they bring the Christmas tree in. He's trying to make you an idolater. Revelation 21 says, um, but the fearful, verse eight, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, which Kirk Cameron is a liar, shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burneth with brim, fire and brimstone, which is the second death. He's going to hell. And then it goes on to say, to the lake of fire, the birds with brimstone forever. It goes on to say, um, in verse 14 of chapter 22 of Revelation, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city of the city for without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murders and idolaters and whosoever loveth and make a lie, maketh a lie. That is Kirk Cameron. That's you. There is no other. That's you. Well, there are many others, but you are one of the chief ones. You try to teach people to worship a monument made in Plymouth. That's a graven image. You gave it out as gifts to people, including to a Jewish man named Ben Shapiro. Ridiculous. Let's just show that so real quick. I, I don't again. mean to sound selfish, but you brought me a gift. I, I've, I've heard that there is a gift. Yes, I did. I'm, I'm, me. I'm very eager to give it to you. Okay, excellent. Okay. Eager. He's okay. so eager. <laughs> that is amazing and also large. That and is incredible is, and, and what large. And <laughs> what, what is this? It's a graven image. But the Bible says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Okay. Going to hell. Going to hell. Going to hell. That is where you're going, Kirk Cameron. And that shall end this chapter. Now we will move on to Mr. Jonathan Kahn. You better repent, Kirk. I'm not sure people like him can repent that have done what they've done. But if it's possible, God is on to you. If little old human beings like us can easily see it, God is on to you. And you better repent, man. You think it's a big fat joke because you probably live in the lap of luxury and, you, and, the, and the Satanists give you everything you want. It's not going to go well for you, man. It's not going to go well for you. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? And that is where you're going. You're going to lose your soul, dude. And you've been warned. 
you've been warned. And I'm sure other people have warned you many, many times, but you wouldn't heed them. But I'm just trying to warn the people to stay away from you because you are evil and wicked to the core. All right, so now I want to go ahead and move on to Mr. Jonathan Kahn, and we need to start with that video, which I don't seem to have put in my playlist. So let me grab it really quick, and we'll go, go from there. Let's see what other people have had to say about it. Sunita says, Kirk loves the attention. Oh, yeah. That guy's been in the spotlight since the since his youth, that's for sure. All right, let me see. Here we go, right here. I call this movie Con Man. So here we go again with the focus on a phallus of the sun god Ra through the Vesica Pisces at yet another so-called Christian gathering. And Jonathan Kahn there about to say a closing prayer over this event he called the return there are so many sigils in this event and in the preliminaries to this event and on the website for this event that you're going to be astounded i plan to present those to you today but before i show you all the witchcraft this man and his organization has conducted on on what is supposed to be god's people Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, I just praise you and thank you for this opportunity to come before you seeking truth we, and we to share that truth. today, so I'm going to go ahead and go forward. And I loose in the mighty name of Jesus that only the truth would come forth and that the truth only would be received. And I praise you and thank you, Father God, for showing us the truth about this man, this false prophet in the church. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. It's amazing how phallic in nature all of this is, stemming from all the obelisks. And I want to start off by showing you the invitation to this event and how obelisks and steeples were featured prominently throughout and also in the symbolism of the logo for this event called The Return. We'll look at that briefly. Oh, one thing I don't say in the logo, look, it's on a globe. We're not on a spinning ball, by the way. The Bible doesn't say that. We're not. You're not moving at a thousand miles per hour at the equator and some slower speed as you go up and around closer to the axle. So just know that's not the truth. They've lied to you about that from the beginning. But look how the sun, look how it's like kind of an orangish color coming, coming down to the, and to the right. But as you go up and to the left, it gets brighter. So this, the arrow is literally pointing at the sun. It's pointing at the sun, and the sunburst is right behind it. Remember, the, all the root of paganism is the worship of the sun. You could see in the logo the use of the upward to the left pointing arrow, which is reminiscent of the arrow used for the sign for Mars or also for, for the male. But the male goes up and to the right. But in the logo, of course, it needs to go up and left to make the R shape. But we also know that up and to the left can indicate a transgender, which the Baphomet is transgender. Yeah, so if you look at the very top, it says male with stroke and male and female sign. So they've got three symbols on this whole thing. But if you just had the circle and the up and to the left and with a slash in it, I know it's hard to see. Let me see if I can make this bigger for you. So see that on the very top one? up to the left one with a line through it. That means transgender because it's both the cross and the arrow. And there is no left word. I mean, there's no cross on the, the, their symbol, but that idea of going up and left, it, it kind of just for some reason, because the Baphomet's transgender, everything they do is transgenderism. It wouldn't surprise me if it had that meaning. And I can't say for sure that that's what they intended, but... You know, the R shape would dictate that if they're going to use an arrow, it would have need to go up and to the left, I imagine. So, but maybe, you see that, in this maybe there's that esoteric meaning too. This image, it has breasts and the male part as well. So this whole thing comes down to the, the worship of the Baphomet. And that's why they would have a transgender symbol uh, inside of their um, logo. And you can see behind this logo on the right in the photo that the Empire State Building is... Yeah, that's not the Empire State Building. That's some other building. It's just a tall, phallic-looking building. Featured, and it's also meant to be a phallic. 
Okay, let's go ahead now and watch the invitation video for Cohen. the return that he put out to invite people to come to Washington, D.C. And you're going to hear he has a motive that Kirk Cameron will share that everyone returned to the original belief systems of our forefathers. But those belief systems are shrouded in masonry, as you can see here with our President George Washington, who was a 33rd degree mason. You'll be able to uh, see all of They say they didn't have those levels of degrees back then, that he was a mason, and a high order mason. But I've been told by people that were involved that back then there probably weren't those degrees as they have them now. The images I put up of downtown Washington, D.C., set up in a Masonic grid. You can see how our defense department is in a building called the Pentagon. I mean, just any little amount of research of the U.S. dollar, and you can see we've been founded on masonry, and it's very clear. And I want to show you from this video exactly how he is trying to get us to go back to that system and not to the Bible itself. We are standing at a pivotal moment in American history and world history, a moment that can permanently seal our nation's course and the course of the world for good, for bad, for calamity, for redemption. America and much of Western civilization was founded on a biblical foundation stone. See, like, Craig, like, like Kirk, as I showed you before, he alludes to the pilgrims, but the pilgrims didn't celebrate Christmas. They didn't do an idolatry. In fact, they outlawed it. They were very biblically based as much as they could be. I'm not saying they didn't have certain beliefs that maybe weren't right, but uh, idolatry was not an issue with them. This is the same exact narrative that you'll see that Kirk Cameron has been bringing forth in the year 2020, just as Jonathan Kahn. This seems to be a team effort and something that the powers that be in masonry, the Illuminati, whatever you want to call it, are trying to get Christians to focus on. This artwork here may be Masonic, though, because if you look and see the guy that's on his knees next to the guy in the black with his hands up, his arms are crossed, and that's definitely a Masonic um, pose, is returning to the original founders, but they want you to return to their idolatry, not to biblical precepts and Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And they'll use pictures such as this one that show the Puritans getting off the Mayflower, the pilgrims, but these people didn't even celebrate Christmas. They actually outlawed it. So they were 100% against idolatry and against masonry. They did not uh, ascribe to it in any way, shape, or form. And so it's interesting that they'll allude to these people, but they think that for the most part, we're brainwashed dummies as so-called Christians, and we have no real idea, which is true to a large extent, we have no real idea what the original uh, pilgrims, the Puritan types that settled here, what they were really about. But it's turned away from that foundation. We have not only driven God out of our public life and have called what is good evil and what is sin good, but we have sacrificed the lives of over 60 million unborn children. And America's fall from God is not only progressing, it's accelerating to the point that it's no longer just a falling away, but a war against the purposes of God. Everything he just said there was true. And that's what they do. They shroud their lies in truth and their misdirection in truth. The outside of it will sound good, will seem right. But then through their imagery, he's showing you time after time after time, so many Masonic symbols that he wants you to turn back to evil and not to good. And so now I'm going to let you see the symbols that he's showing you. There's the idol of the cross that they say just came out of the 911 rubble. There's the pyramid in San Francisco, the obelisk pyramid. There's the obelisk in Capitol Dome, as well as the Parthenon-looking building there. The globe lie. They've got to promote that. Masons do that all the time. Here we have an all-seeing eye in the womb, essentially. So evil. There's the Parthenon-looking building in D.C. with the pillars. There's that cross again. Of course, then you have Ashtaroth or Ishtar, represented in New York Harbor. It's the Statue of Liberty. The globe lie again. I mean, that statue 
in New York Harbor is forbidden by God, forbidden by the Ten Commandments. Trump is the savior, according to him and his books. More steeples, which are obelisks. The Washington Monument again. This church filled with idolatry and obelisks and minarets. The, the Capitol Dome again, which represents the female womb. People raising their hands. It's just fine in church. It's fine. The sunrise, of course, the sun is the focus of worship. Yes. Another <laughs> steeple. Capitol Dome again. The city layout where you can actually see the triangle leading to the Capitol Dome. More skyscrapers. Another steeple, obelisk, phallic symbol. A pyramid rooftops. Blowing on this horn, which looks rather phallic to me. Look, blowing a shofar, God ordered us to do that. But it's just, it's they, they'll give us the esoteric meaning that he's blowing the shofar. Well, by the way, he's got an, uh, he has the hexagram on his back, as above, so below, with a lamb in the inside of it, which I'll address. But I'm not saying that blowing a shofar in, in, like on the Feast of Trumpets or whatever is phallic, but they're just showing you so many different phallics that it seems to fit in that way. On the back of the... In the back of his shawl, of course, is a six-pointed hexagram as above, so below. There's another steeple. Another obelisk coming through the Vesca Pisces, which is the female body part. So you are actually looking at architectural sex right there. That's pornography, right? There. And the cross on top of, of the steeples represents the same thing because the cross represents the female body part in the form of the Egyptian Ankh, which is what it was adopted from. We're not supposed to have any graven image, as I've said before many times tonight. And when we make one, Satan will apply the worst possible of uh, blasphemy to it. There, that is a male member going through a female body part. Then he goes overseas, shows another obelisk in the female womb in it's the form Spain. of a dome. It's worship of the sun again. The flag, which by the way, has lots of pentagrams on it. 50 of them. 13 stripes. One more erect obelisk with a cross on top with the sun, of course, there. And of course, a child worshiping in front of a Christmas tree, the Christmas phallus. Think about that. There's so many levels to that right there. First of all, this event was held in September. Why would they put a child in front of a Christmas tree? Of course, it's blurred out, but you can tell that's what it is. Many Satanists are pedophiles, by the way. They get more vampiric energy from pedophilia and killing the innocent. That's why there are so many abortions in this country. Of course, our last image will be with the sun focused and a pyramid shaped mountain. It's just image after image that he puts up represents the phallus and the female body part and the, the worship of the sun part and the worship of the male erection. And that's what this is all about. The worship of the Baphomet, the worship of the transgender, the worship of the union between the male and the female. Instead of the worship of the creator, it's the worship of the creation. And the feminine and divine. that's what Jonathan Kahn types and your Kirk Camerons want you to do. They want you to be idolaters and they want you to worship sex. You know, God made sex and it, sex is a good thing. Sex is meant to do a lot of things spiritually between a man and a wife, one man, one woman for life. It bonds them together. It's pleasurable because God made it pleasurable. But the wicked, perverted nature of what sex has become due to Satan and his demons ruling this world and people willingly following after him, this is what we get. And it's infiltrated the church. And Jonathan Kahn, he is the con man that's helping it. He's one of many con mans, but he's a big best-selling author. And what he's doing to the church is really dark. The last thing I want to leave you with is imagery from the actual event. And I want to, you guys to see how he, in fact, uses a different type of hand sigil than you may be aware of. It's not the 666. It's not the Baphomet hand sign. It's not the triangle shape going up or the triangle shape going down. It's not any of those things. But what he ends up doing is what you might remember as the Vulcan hand sign from the Star Trek series. And the first to do it was a Jewish actor by the name of Leonard Nimoy, who played the character. And I'll show you some tape of him recalling how he came up with the symbol and that it came from a Jewish ceremonial custom. But I want you to see 
Jonathan Kahn do the same thing with his uh, right hand. So on your left, you'll notice that that right hand's beginning to separate out into somewhat of a V shape. And uh, it's, it's, he's not fully bought into it yet, but as time goes on, it's going to get more and more so. On both hands, you can notice that that's happening. And I believe this prayer is the one at the beginning, but you'll also see the prayer that they do at the end, where not only him, but several other men take their hands in the same shape. And you can see it really on the right hand now. It's very much flashing a sigil. This is magic. He's conducting Kabbalah-based magic against the people at this time. It's no different than Kirk Cameron, as I'll show you, flashing the Baphomet hand sign and so on. This Vulcan hand salute goes way back, way back to antiquity. It goes back to the Kabbalah. It goes back to practices going on in the Talmud, observing Jewish traditions and the Kabbalah. This is a wicked, evil curse that Jonathan Kahn and his Kahn men here on this stage are putting on the people. So now we'll flash forward to the prayer, but I want you to pay close attention to that shawl. Of course, there's the six-pointed star on it, and it has the lamb in it, which is supposed to represent Christ, right? But remember that the false prophet comes as a lamb who speaks as a dragon, and that's what Jonathan Kahn is. He's not the false prophet, but he's one of them who comes as a lamb but speaks as a dragon. He shows his symbols as a dragon, and uh, you're going to see that hand sign uh, come up here in a second again. Okay, can you see the guy over his right shoulder? He's already got his hands spread out. Let's zoom in on him. Oh yeah, you can see it really clearly. And here, of course, we got Jonathan the con man doing it very strikingly on his right hand. And you'll also see others in the background beside the one I just showed you doing it as well. I don't think everybody on the stage knows about it, but the ones that do are definitely doing it. One thing I want you to catch is how their hands are actually pointing in the direction of the Washington Monument, the obelisk coming up through the Divine Feminine, through the Vesca Pisces. And of course, the people themselves, their hands are pointed back at the people on the stage, but behind them is the Feminine Divine in the form of the dome, which is the womb, represents the womb on top of the um, Capitol building. And remember, when people do symbols they're also sigils the sigils operate for a couple reasons they get them off the hook because they've warned you they've told you who they are so they can lie to you but as long as they show you who they are then they're off the hook in their mind that guy with the dark glasses he's also got it going so that's one reason the other reason is to conduct a, a mesmerizing spell on you and uh, that that has a, a hypnotic effect that draws you in, that causes you to be under their power, under their control. He's doing it on both hands now. So you've seen enough. I mean, it's clear that's what he's doing, but let me show you what it actually is. So I'm with my father and my grandfather and my brother sitting in the, the bench seats. Women were upstairs. Five or six guys get up on the bima on the stage and they're facing the congregation. They get their talit over their heads and they start this chanting. I think it's called dukhaning. And uh, my father said to me, don't look. So everybody's got their, their eyes covered with their hands, or they've got their talit down over their faces, or turned away, turned their back to these guys. And I hear this strange sound coming from them. They're not singers. They were shouters and dissonant. It was all discordant. And they're young, uh, they were, they were doing like, ay, 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 that kind of wailing and all discordant, not together, not in unison. And then the leader would shout out, and the rest of them would respond, it was chilling. You know? <laughs> Whoa, something, something major is happening here. So I peeked. And I saw them with their hands stuck out from beneath their tully like this towards the congregation. I thought, 
wow. Something really got hold of me. I thought, this is a... I had no idea what was going on, but the sound of it and the look of it was magical. This is the shape of the letter Shin, Hebrew alphabet Shin. Very interesting letter in the, in the uh, language. It, it's the first letter in the word Shaddai, the first letter in the word Shalom, first letter in the word Shekhinah, which is the name of the feminine aspect of God. I want to stop that down and just say that there is no feminine aspect of God. God is represented as a male in the scriptures. There's no place where he is not a father, where he is a mother. There is no place anywhere in the Jewish scriptures or the New Testament or what they call the New Testament throughout scripture. There's nowhere where he's represented as a divine feminine. So this is the divine feminine entering in through the so-called mother of heaven worship that went on in the book of Jeremiah that God had them had him speak against what they were doing and worshiping the queen of heaven. And that is what has happened to all forms of religion is the entering in of the divine feminine, the Ashtaroth, the Ishtar. And just as it's entered into the traditional Christian church, it also entered into traditional um, Hebrew worship. Who supposedly was created to live amongst humans, the Shekhinah. Why you're not supposed to look came to me much, much later, much later. My wife Susan has a cousin who's a rabbi here in Los Angeles at Temple Israel. And I was telling him this story and he said the reason you don't look is the, the legend is that during that benediction, uh, the Shekhinah comes into the sanctuary to bless the congregation. And you don't want to see that because it's so powerful, it could, it could really get, be seriously injured or it could be fatal. So that's why you protect yourself by hiding. In your eyes, don't look. I survived. <laughs> I never dreamed that I would do that someday or be involved in some way. But sure enough, one day we're making the Star Trek series, television series. We come to a, a very lovely script called A Mock Time where my character, Spock, who comes from the Vulcan planet, has to go home to fulfill a marriage betrothal, to be married. And the lady who's going to uh, conduct the service is a, a lady named Tepau, played by a wonderful Viennese, Jewish Viennese actress named Celia Lofsky. I'm supposed to meet her when we arrive at the planet. We exchange hellos. It was the first time we were seeing other Vulcans, other people of my race. So I was hoping to find some touches that could develop the story of the Vulcan sociology, history, whatever, ritual. So I said to the director, I think we should have some special greeting that Vulcans do. Because we, he said, what do you mean? I said, well, you know, humans, we, we have these rituals, that we, the things that we do. Um, we shake hands, we, we nod to each other, we bow to each other, we salute each other. What do Vulcans do? So I suggested this. He said, okay. And that's how we, we did it as a greeting, a Vulcan greeting. Now, boy, that just took off through the culture. It was amazing. Within days after it was on the air, I was getting it on the street. People doing this to me, waving to me in this Vulcan gesture. That, that's interesting. And it's been that way to this day. It's almost 50 years later, people are still doing it. It just touched the magic chord. Most people to this day still don't know what it's all about. A lot of people do because I've talked about it a lot. I've been asked the question, where did that come from? And I have very readily put out this story. It's, it's, it's sort of a, like, like a secret it's a handshake or something you know, that people enjoy to exchange with each other as if to say, I'm, I'm in on it. I, I, know this, I know the joke, you know, Star Trek, right? You know, hey, Star Trek. You know, it's great. People don't realize they're blessing each other with this. <laughs> That's great. Blessing each other, or is this a curse? I found a really good blogger about this subject called A Watchman's Revelation, and in it, he goes through great detail to describe the source of this Vulcan hand sign, if that's what you want to call it, Vulcan salute. 
The author of the blog wrote that Leonard Nimoy was deep into the Kabbalah, which is Jewish mysticism. He always spoke of it and his fascination with it, even published a book of photographs called Shekinah. So here we have him in his worship of the divine feminine. Shekinah is the Talmudic depiction of the audible and visible feminine deity side of God on earth, which as we know, the scriptures bear no resemblance to that whatsoever. As Mr. Nimoy said in his interview, according to the Kabbalah, the written form of this hand sign is known as the Shin, also shown here. You can see here that there is some definite pagan uh, relationship to Vulcan. He was the god of the forge. His Greek name is Hephaestus, and married to Venus, his symbols are fire and the blacksmith's hammer. So my question is, how did Jonathan Kahn, the Kahn man, allow something that came from a false version of the Hebrew religion, the Kabbalah, the Talmud, all the stuff that was counter to the original scriptures that God had given that Jesus had spoken against all the oral law so many times because it conflicted with God's law through his servants, servant Moses and the other, um, the other prophets. How come Jonathan Kahn doesn't have the understanding not to bring something like that through to the other side when he becomes a believer in Yeshua or in Jesus? If he's not doing it on purpose, which I'm telling you he is, just like, just like uh, Kirk Cameron was throwing sigil magic on us, so is Jonathan Kahn. And the whole thing about the Vulcan thing with Star Trek, I won't go into, allow that to go into too much more detail about that. You can look it up yourself. But you could see here that this um, hand sign, uh, I think it's a tarot card, has the devil doing that hand sign. Of course, a five-pointed pentagram on top of the goat's head pointing downward. I mean, there's so many. There's uh, from World War II, Winston Churchill doing it. They said he was like a Druid priest. I mean, all of this stuff. It's complete paganism. It's complete witchcraft. And it's they're conducting so it evil. This. Here's some other ways that you can see it viewed on that book cover. Of course, there's always... So when you look at this thing, I guess this might be in a Hebrew synagogue. It shows you the mixture and how they've, just like Catholicism is the mixture between Jesus and paganism, they have their own forms of it. So you could see that sunburst with the light coming out of it. It's also eight-pointed. So that's the feminine divine, the Ishtar, the eight-pointed star. Then you've got the hexagrams, which are as above, so below, but they also meant, uh, represent the male member going up into the female. The upward pointing triangle is the male. The downward pointing triangle is the female. Then you've got them holding the hand sign below with the two so-called Vulcan salutes that's also making upward triangle. So that's the male. The upward triangle is the male. The downward triangles created by the finger spread is the female. So you've got the same sort of aspect there of the as above, so below, the male going into the female. All of that stuff is represented in, in everything that you see there. So the same type of paganism that Christianity suffers with, so does um, Kabbalistic and, um, and uh, Talmudic Judaism. It's the same mixture, and it always has been. And that was, if you go and read the, all the First Testament, some people call it the old, I call it the first. If you go and read it all, it's God's complaint to them through every generation about their, their idolatry and their mixing paganism in. And that's what Jonathan Kahn is sent to do to us from the Messianic, Messianic Jewish side, the Hebrew root side. And also he uses false prophecies and his books to get us hoodwinked and off target because we won't read the word for ourselves. So we trust these other people to do it for us. Hexagrams going along with it. What's also interesting is that the sunburst above the hand sigils is an eight pointed star shape, which also represents Ishtar, the goddess of fertility. And of course, the fem feminine divine that the hand symbols are supposed to drum up. And there's Jonathan Kahn just to wrap it up, doing the same thing. The Vulcan hand sign, a sigil to conduct magic to initiate the divine feminine. Wow. Can it get any worse than this? These people are cursing God's people, or at least people, some, some of them are God's people. Some of them are trying to do right. They 
They think when they come in the name of Christianity that they must be right. Why would you bring a religious thing called the return to a city that's laid out like this? Laid out in a Masonic, all the Masonic symbols, the Al Malek. It's got that there and you're going to have it like literally like right in the backdrop is going to be a big giant penis to the sky. In the same city with it, with this thing on the left, that's in that's in that's in Washington. Now the Baphomet on the right, I don't think that one's in Washington. For some reason, I think that one might be in Detroit. It's got children looking up to it. It's the same thing, guys, over and over and over. And this is what they want you to go back to. This is what they want you to serve. So. Kirk Cameron, the used car salesman, and Jonathan Con Man Con. Run. Don't read their books. Don't watch their movies. Don't ascribe to them in any way. Run because this is who they really are right here. I think I'm going to make, um, kind of see if I can format this a little less opaque, make it really. I kind of made it somewhat translucent. I'll make it darker. So you can see, this is who you're really dealing with. There's Kirk. There's what you're really dealing with, a demon, many demons. He's got a legion of them. He seems so nice, though, man. I think we're almost virtually the same age, too. I would like to be friends with somebody that would be nice like that. But he's being nice so he can hoodwink you. Poor Jonathan. He was not born with, a, with an attractive look himself. I'm not sure what's worse. I'm just kidding. I shouldn't talk about him. He got what he got. And uh, there's Jonathan. There's the demon. Jonathan the demon. And we're like the Rowdy Roddy Piper character. We can actually see what's going on. Well, I really appreciate all of you guys staying and hanging in there so long. We've been on the air for two hours and 16 minutes. That was faster than I thought it would be. I see we got John Farkas. We got Sunita. We got Gary. So glad you guys were here. Um, John says his hands can't even make that symbol. <laughs> um, Stephanie says, hi, hey, Stephanie. Uh, corruption is the mark of the beast. You know, there's just all this stuff. It's crazy. It's crazy what I just showed you. I almost can't believe it myself. But I really felt led to bring it forward. I was trying to put something to the song I wrote called Jezebel's Judgment Day, and you're hearing that in the in the breaks and in the intro. And uh, that's a free download at the Reverb Nation link below. If you want to want to hear that song at any point, you can always watch the videos free of charge on YouTube too. And, uh, but I was making that video and that's what made me, I, I was trying to come up with an idea of what I should do. And honestly, they're both promoting the feminine divine. So, you know, of course, Kirk is promoting it through a female statue He's promoting Jezebel. He's promoting Ashtaroth and Ishtar. And, um, so I, I don't mean to sound selfish, but you brought me a gift. It's a gift. Yes, I did. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm very eager to give it to you. Okay, excellent. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is a, a statue of a woman. So that is it's the feminine amazing. divine. So I mean, large. the feminine divine is supposed to overcome the masculine in these last days. That's what Satan as the Baphomet wants because he's overturning God's order, you know? And that's just the way it is. Satan's trying to overturn uh, uh, God's order in heaven and earth. He wants to overcome God himself. It's not going to happen. He's not going to win any of this. But we just need to be counted among the number that don't fall for these hijinks. Because like Jesus said that in the last days, if it were possible, if it were possible, even the elect could be deceived. And, you know, we don't we really don't want that for ourselves. We want to stay in, in, obedient to God's commandments um, obedient to his word. We want to really um, be be righteous in terms of our seeking of him. And I truly think that as we as we seek that, God's going to show us who these people are. We're going to be able to see it and we're going to be able to figure out what we need to do with our lives. And the path is narrow. And few there be that find it. And if you find it, you truly need to go stay on that path 
and trust God, even if it makes you all alone, even if all your friends scoff at you for not celebrating Christmas as he would want you to do. If once you learn the truth about it, there's no putting the toothpaste back in the tube. You, if you know it's the truth that it's paganism and you know that God is highly offended about it by paganism and the worship of other gods in any um, millennia or any century, and if we appropriate pagan practices of antiquity, antiquity now, we're acting as pagans. We are pagans. And idolaters do not inherit eternal life. And so don't listen to any of these people that are trying to lead you back to our forefathers, which were not, not the pilgrims, but the, the Masonic forefathers, as all of their symbols and sigils have shown that's who they serve. Even that statue, as I showed you, uh, that Kirk has been given out as gifts to people was built by the Masons in the 19th century between like 1859 to 1888. It took that long to make it. It's one that I think it's, he said it was the heaviest granite carved image in the nation. And it's in Plymouth, Massachusetts. So um, it's like 81 feet tall. So that is one of the biggest graven images from one piece of stone, I think he said. I could be wrong about that, but God told us not to do that ever. And we are not supposed to be doing that. And we need to worship God in spirit and in truth. He's not a man. He's not things made with man's hands. We can't denigrate him and pull him down to that level. And we shouldn't. So let me uh, conclude with a prayer. Father God, we just praise and thank you for this opportunity to show the truth about these people that are wolves in sheep's clothing that have come to try to get us to break your laws and to be confused and to be discouraged about keeping your word and about doing the truth and to just accept these false winds of doctrine and anything that comes our way. I thank you and praise you for having us return to your word, not to forefathers, but to the word of God and to be obedient to it. As Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments and I'll send you a comforter and he will lead you in all things and he will teach you and show you all the truth. And Father God, we know we get that by being obedient to you and keeping your commandments. And I'm thanking you and praising you for helping us all to do that. And in so doing, I thank you and praise you for increasing our discernment, helping us to see when these wolves in sheep's clothing come along. We praise you and thank you for that. In Jesus' mighty name. Again, I say thank you to everybody that showed up. Mr. Jason Turner, Phil C., Hop to it, um, Dr. Spengler, <laughs> good to see you, Lori, um, Stephanie, Sunita, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha was here. What did she say? I haven't seen you in a while. I've been studying the Talmud and what exactly it teaches. I have to say I was in literal shock and sad at the same time. Yeah, it actually teaches that Jesus is boiling in a hot vat of um, excrement in hell. So it literally has like a medium who Jesus supposedly spoke through, a female medium that says that. Yeah, Helen said during the uh, video of Kirk Cameron speaking to the um, Liberty University kids that his fake British accent was terrible. It was as bad or worse than mine. And I had a seven-year-old British kid once say, Coach Doug, your British accent is rubbish. So, and his was too. It was awful. And he's supposed to be an actor. It's terrible. Anyway, if I failed to thank any of you for being here, I think of Carl Smuck. Good to see you. I didn't say thanks to you. John Farkas, I did, so. I'm going to go ahead and send you guys out in the break room with that song one more time in that video. And thanks for joining us. We'll see you on the next live stream for Without Spot or Blemish Ministry. They think they're getting away with it. They think that you don't see. What they've done to your body They rob, kill and destroy They take without fear All that which we hold so dear But they won't see it coming And they won't know Moment you bring them down so low They'll even deny That it's your mighty end When out of the beds 
they won't stand. They won't stand. They won't stand. Stand. They won't stand. Jezebel's judgment day, it has arrived. Deny repentance, they all die. Jesus gave us so much space that she wouldn't turn. The fullness of the judgment so well known. They won't see it coming, and they won't know. The moment you bring them down so low. Believe and deny. And it's your mighty end When out of their beds They won't stand They won't stand They won't stand Stand They won't stand See it coming, and they won't know. The moment you bring them down so low, they'll even deny that it's your mighty hand. And out of the beds, they won't stand. They won't stand. Thank you so much for joining us for another live stream podcast. Just wanted to use this time to tell you about our other channels and websites. You'll find links below for our music backup channel, for our brand new Jesus Not Paul channel, as well as for our blog and our website, as well as the website for JesusNotPaul.org. Hope you'll check it out. There's free materials you can find on those websites, especially JesusNotPaul.org. Everything we provide is free of charge, but we also have a PayPal link below for donations for those who feel led. And we really appreciate your support to help us continue to making content that's helping people find the truth and to find Jesus Christ as their Messiah. Thanks so much for your support and enjoy the podcast.